Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how carbon dating works. So on Earth, um, we've got two types, two isotopes of carbon. We've got carbon-14, which is the radioactive type, and then we've got carbon-12. What happens is that over time, carbon-14 decays to carbon-12. Now the thing is that in the atmosphere, when you go out in the atmosphere, the carbon-14 is always being replenished, okay? So the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is constant over time. All right, so knowing this, how can we figure out how old a specimen, an animal, a plant, Something that takes in carbon, how old is it? Well, the thing is that once the, the plant, I'm going to draw the plant. So the plant, during its lifetime, we'll do it as a plant or maybe a piece of wood. Okay, that's my plant. Awesome. Um, during its lifetime, it's taking in some of the carbon-12, okay, and some of the carbon-14, okay? So it's taking it in. However, when the plant dies, it's no longer taking in your carbon-14 and carbon-12. And what ends up happening is your carbon-14 gets converted to carbon-12 slowly over time. So by measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 and comparing it to a new version or a current version of that plant, the plant that's alive today, or an animal that's alive today, um, what you can do is you can figure out how old that is because the ratio in the plant that has died will slowly get smaller and smaller, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, over time. Whereas, as compared to new, uh, a new version of that plant. Let's, let's say we're using a tree, okay? Let's say that this is a tree just to make our life nice and easy, okay? So here's a tree. The tree took that carbon in. All right, so what we need to do is we need to measure how much carbon-14 is in the sample that we've, uh, we, we're testing. And generally by, by doing this, in order to make this measurement, we have to actually burn that sample. Okay, so let's say we get a piece of wood and want to figure out how old it is. Well, we burn it and then we measure how much is carbon-14, how much is carbon-12. So, how do we do these, how, do we, how does carbon dating actually work? So, what we do, we, t we, we, we burn the sample and we measure how much carbon-14 is. There is. So, let n of t be the amount... of carbon-14 in the sample. Okay? And once you make that measurement, you're going to say, okay, how much carbon-14 do I have? How much carbon-12 do I have? And compare to a new sample, something that was, you know, recently died. Okay, so that's what we start with. Now, over time, okay, the... The, the amount of carbon-14 decays at a rate that is proportional to the amount of the sample that remains. So what that means is the decay rate, dn by dt, when we say is proportional to, that's equals k times the amount that remains. Now this is a differential equation. This is a first order differential equation. So how do we solve it? Well, we solve by separation of variables. Okay, so what do we gotta do? Well, we gotta get the n's on one side of the equation and the t's on the other. So I'm gonna bring n over to the other side. It's gonna divide one over n of t uh, dn, and I'm going to bring dt over to the other side of the equation, equals k dt. So now I've separated the n's 
and the T's. Remember, N is the amount of carbon-14 in the sample. So, let's integrate. I can keep K inside the integral or, or not, okay? So, what is the integral of 1 over N dN? Well, that is simply ln N of T plus some unknown constant. What is the integral of dt? Well, that is t plus some other unknown constant of integration. Now what I can do, I can uh, rewrite it for you here. Plus k c2. This itself is another constant. Let's call that c3. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to group these two constants together. So what I get is ln t equals kt plus c1 plus uh, c3 minus c1. I'm going to group that into another constant. I'm just going to call it c0. Okay, and let me just clear this up a little bit. Okay, so this is my... This is my general solution to this differential equation. General solution. Make this a little smaller. Okay. All right. Now, the unknowns are what is K and what is C naught. These are my two unknowns. And in order to determine these unknowns and get the particular solution, right? We need data points. We need the initial values. So this becomes an initial value problem. So I, V, P, initial value problem. What do we know about, you know, the carbon-14, the amount of carbon-14? Well, we know two things. Number one, the amount of carbon-14, okay, when time equals zero. So I'm actually going to put in T instead of T, I'm going to put n at zero, and that is the amount that's in the atmosphere, okay? What that means, this is the, the, the amount of carbon-14 in a sample that you would measure in the, in the atmosphere. So, this is uh, a new sample, okay? So, n naught is amount of C14 present in a new, relatively recent. For example, let's say we were using wood. We have a tree here and we, we, we burn the wood. We compare the amount of carbon-14 that's present in a new sample to the amount of carbon-14 in our actual sample. That, that's what we're going to end up doing. So uh, we'll say sample here. Okay, and because the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, or the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere, is constant over time, then we can, we can do this because uh, we assume that there was the same amount of, of carbon-14 uh, when the sample was alive. Okay, um, let's go on. That's what, number one. Number two... The one thing we know about carbon-14 is that it has a half-life of 5,000, so half-life is 5,730 years. Now, this depends, so C14 half-life is 5,730 years. Uh, it depends on the material. Okay, so, but for carbon-14, that's that radioactive isotope. What that means is that after 5,730 years, if you started with n naught, you're going to en end up with n naught over 2. That's how much uh, amount of carbon-14 in the sample will be present. So, n at 5,730 years is equal to n naught over 2. Okay, how do we use these two data points to get C, uh, C naught and K? Well, we sub them in, okay? So, number one, we're going to sub into our equation. Ln of, now we have N naught for N of T, is equal to K times 0 plus 
C naught. Well, that tells us that our unknown coefficient, uh, unknown constant C naught, is ln n naught, and we can now sub that into our equation. So we have ln n of t, okay, is k t plus oops, plus ln of n naught. And what we can do is we can bring this n naught over to the other side of the equation. So ln n of t minus ln n naught is equal to kt, okay? And what we know is that ln of a minus ln of b equals ln of a over b, okay? You can put the brackets if you like. So what that means is that we what we have is ln of n of t over n naught equals k t. Okay? So that becomes our equation uh, if we sub in the first uh, number one here. Now what happens if we sub in number two? Well, we know that when t is 5730, so we're going to say ln n of t, when, when t is 5730, we have n naught over 2. Divided by n naught equals k, and then we have 5730. Okay, so this becomes, how do we solve for k? k equals 1 over 5730 ln of 1 half. That's our k. So we can sub that in to our equation here, and the equation now becomes ln n of t over n naught is equal to 1 over 5730 ln of 1 half, okay, n times t, okay? All right, this becomes our equation, and if we want, usually we want to know how old something is, so we can just isolate for t. So let me just isolate for t. So t is equal to 5730 over the ln of 1 half. So I'm just bringing everything over to the other side of the equation. Ln n of t over n naught. Okay, so this becomes how we solve uh, you know, for how old the sample is. So let's do an example. So we're going to use this. This is what we want to use. Okay? So let's go in an example. Here's an example. All right. So we go and we take a piece of wood, an old piece of wood, and we burn it, and we find out that the amount of carbon-14 in the sample, okay, is 67.8% uh, of a new sample. Well, let's say we're using a piece of wood. Let's call it wood. Okay, so what that means is that N of T, okay, is now uh, 0.678 of new wood and not, okay? So it's the carbon-14 has decayed inside the sample in comparison to what's in the atmosphere, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere. So how old is the wood? Well, we're going to sub it into our equation that we just derived. T equals 5730 over ln of 1 half ln of 0 0.678 and not over and not there. Those are just going to cancel. Okay. So what we have is we have T is 5730 over ln of 1 half times ln of 0 0.678. And that is 3,210 years. Okay, so in this example, if the ratio goes down to 67.8%, the amount, the, the age of the sample can be determined, and in this case, it's 3,210 years. So that's, that's how you would do it. All right, thanks for, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video.